Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Doing great. All right. Let's see. Uh, way of announcements. Uh, by the way, yesterday uh, was a birthday celebration for Dad and Richie. Uh, Sarah would like to thank you to church. We all want to thank you. Um, it was great. Sarah, you did a good job putting it together. I did a little, a little bit of a stretching the truth, I'll call it. <laughs> to get him here and then dad here too so uh lord forgive me for that <laughs> but anyhow it was a success and it was really good turnout and we love them and love everybody that brought food and uh it was just a good time good time thank you for that uh today at uh 6 p.m will be the monthly singspiration it's the first sunday of the night and barberville will be here so 
You know how uh, them? Uh, oh, well, then there'll be plenty of food then. <laughs> <laughs> Folks in Barberville know they, they eat too much. <laughs> but anyhow, um, just feed the church here tonight, okay? But still bring food. Um, Dad will be here. So. You know how he likes to eat. All right. Um, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. will be Bible study. Wednesday evening at 6.30 will be the prayer meeting. Uh, Midweek prayer meeting. Um, sat this next Saturday uh, is on December the eleventh. Is the Christmas store out here? Is that at, that's at not it's not at four, right? Ten to two. Ten, ten, to, two. ten to two. Ten to two. Um, ten were bad and two were good. Twelve went down and spine canyon. Right. Anyhow, ten to two. Ten to two. Um, on Saturday morning, we'll be having our Christmas store. Need helpers? See Sarah. Uh, they're going to have some gifts that the kids can come purchase and stuff like that. Um, if they want to buy for their families and all and don't have the money, it would be a good place. To, we're setting up a small Walmart is what we're doing. <laughs> so it'll be good. It'll all be good. Um, but anyhow, is that for just kids, right? Twelve and under. Yes. Twelve and under. Mm -hmm. All right. If you feel like a kid, you well, I'm, where's Landon? He can come get. He, Jacob, you pick me up something, okay? All right, no. Just kidding. All right, and um, women of faith meeting that's to be announced. That will be coming up. Um, I'm sure we got Christmas uh, baskets to do, food and all that coming up. Um, do y'all donations? You take dry goods donations like canned goods, okay? Before the next one or two Sundays, please get your donations in here. We'll put them on the counter back there. Canned goods, you know, stuff that people could use uh, to mix with their meal. Um, anyhow, we'll take that. Um, as always, you can watch all services at wofbc.com. Um, by the way, next Sunday is the 12th. Uh, we're going to be eating again. <laughs> Next Sunday after the morning service is Christmas dinner here. Uh, dinner on the ground, so be sure to bring a um, covered dish for that. Um, and then the 19th in the evening um, is our regular um, gift exchange here at the church uh, for the night, nighttime. It should be uh, just instead of service, we go out there and sing carols. And we'll have the Christmas party. We've already got the kids' stuff uh, bought. Um, and men bring a men's gift. Women brings a women. You know how it goes. Uh, and we're eating again. It'll be the finger food, cookies, sweets, uh, you name it. And um, something. Christy, don't forget to make them things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no wraps. Anyhow, um, other than that, you know, um, that is coming up. So we got three Sundays of eating here. We will take a break for New Year's. And then it's not long till the fish fry and we'll eat again. Uh, but anyhow, before I go on, I do got an announcement. Somebody left their uh, diabetes meter, sugar meter, in the uh, fellowship hall last night. So, it's, huh? Might be Deborah's. Somebody. I think so. That don't look like hers unless she's changed her belt. All right. Well, we think it's blood sugar stuff in there. <laughs> Anyhow, y'all uh, make sure. It, yeah. Shouldn't have shook it. It might blow up. All right. Anyhow. All right. Um, flowers today. Uh, oh, before we do the flowers. Brenda, thank you, and whoever helped decorate here on the uh, Christmas, beautiful trees we have. Kevin, we had two more Christmas angels that helped. Um, June and Marcia and Marcia and you and Ro. And I want to thank you, ladies. You did a great job. I appreciate it. Now, you followed them, didn't you? Yep. You didn't try to lead them. 
No. All right, y'all be remembered that. Don't follow Brenda. She, she, you just hold her hand and take her wig. All right. And I found my way up here four times this week. Four times. Four times. That's a miracle. In this, but, okay. That's a miracle. Alright. <laughs> uh, and the flowers today are from the church. They're in honor of I believe they're from the church, but they're in honor of Dad and Richie's birthdays. Two old dudes trying to do stuff. Alright. Did we have any other birthdays this week? How about any anniversaries that was celebrated? Well, Let's sing happy birthday to them again. Happy birthday to you. First time visitors, but we got Charlie and Arlene and Jimmy. They're back here. They're they're taking all the fish out of the lake <laughs> and uh, taking them back. We're gonna for freeze them and take them back to Kentucky. But anyhow, we're still glad to have y'all back. All right, Richie, come on up. Well, good morning. Uh, not gonna say too much. I do, do want to thank everybody for coming out last night and uh, surprised me. It was the first time I've ever been surprised like that. Um, Brother Howard said it's the first time that he was ever had a surprise party where he was actually surprised. So, um, but I will tell you this, um, you know, Kevin told a couple of little small white lies to get me here. And I'm sure there was a lot of other people that um, kept some truths. So at altar call this morning, <laughs> I'm just saying, um, I will tell you this, Kevin told me that we were going to go get uh, a table from Palm Coast that, that Becky had purchased or was getting, and, and he said, we're also going to go look at a shotgun. And a I don't know why he added that to the story, <laughs> but I had my heart in this shotgun, and I'm like, so when I got here, I'm like, where's my shotgun at? Evan? <laughs> Sarah? I need a shotgun. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, we want to go to Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to we want to mention Yvonne Spry. She's on here, but she's actually having her cat uh, catheter tomorrow. Her heart cat tomorrow. Um, and uh, Kim wants to thank everybody for the prayers that we've been praying for her. Mom's surgery. She got good good report back from uh, her biopsy. She does not have cancer. Praise God. But she will have surgery to remove the growth that's on her neck, underneath her ear, on the 23rd, a couple days before Christmas. So y'all keep her in your prayers as well. Does anyone have anyone they would like to add to the prayer list before we go to the Lord in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to um, put uh, Marge on there. It's, I didn't spell it right. Um, okay. She needs some prayer. Marge Latshaw? Okay. The Lord knows. There we go. All right. Anyone else? Uh, our brother Kevin back here, some of you already know because I'd already uh, messaged. I didn't let you know that. But I let uh, some people know um, that he had had an accident. Uh, it was not his fault, but uh, he, he got in a wreck in his rig. And he had to go to the doctor, and uh, he's, he's got a sprained neck. They said just a sprained neck. So it's no no big deal, um, but anyway he's he's hurting his his neck his shoulders got a big growth on it I guess he looks like. Uh, <laughs> I am not an animal. Anyway, uh, pray. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin. I'll be repenting today too. Um, to pray for Kevin, uh, his pain, and also keep Becky in your prayers as she's continuing to recover. And my, and my wife, she's got a problem. She had a hernia surgery a couple years ago, and she's having issues with that again. So keep her in your prayers. And Michelle, you did your thing on your... Yeah, I was doing an MRI up at Mayo on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday? This Tuesday. Okay, so keep, 
Keep Michelle Jacobs in your prayer because she is doing an MRI on Tuesday. And we're going to get some good news for that. Praise God. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I want to, first I want to thank everybody in the church for, for praying for my grandson and his wife. They had their babies. Amen. And everything went great. She's doing well. The babies are two weeks old tomorrow. Oh, and praise and God. They're just the most precious thing. The greatest gift ever. And I want to just have someone pray over my husband. He's having neck issues and back issues. They just told him he had scoliosis. And so now he's seeing, he's going to a chiropractor to try to see if that there is going to work for him. What's his name? Ricky Dude. Okay. And, and also thank the church for praying for my son. He has a job, and he's three weeks into the job, and there's still some little issues going on, you know, with drugs and, and his girlfriend, but I'm working on that. I'm trying, Amen. I'm, I, I, the guy's working through me to, to talk to this child, and I've got so close to taking her to the Lighthouse Ministry to get her help, because I could feel if I can get her help, that will help him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, and she, I, I've had her talked into it twice, and then she backed out. You know, but I'm not going to give up. Amen. 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 Keep praying. All right, anyone else? Yes, sir. She's got a baby back in Kentucky. She's 18 months old, and she's going to be having brain surgery, too. What's her name? Evelia? What was the last name? Hughes. Okay. Anyone else? All right. If not, let's go to Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, come before you once again, Lord, just with praise in our hearts and on our lips to sing praises to your holy name. Father, we are so grateful as this time of year rolls around, Lord, we all uh, tend to get a little bit more spiritual because of Christmas, Father, and I just pray that the, the, the love and the joy that we have in our heart and the fellowship that we have towards one another during this time of year carries over throughout the rest of the year, Lord, that we remember our Lord and Savior each and every day and the joy that we have from being saved from the free gift that you have given us through our faith in Christ Jesus who laid down his life for our sins, Lord. Uh, what a blessing. Father, we thank you so much for that free gift. Lord, I thank you for everyone who has gathered here today and ask your hand to be upon them. Put a hedge of protection around us all, Lord, and guide us in the, right, uh, the path of righteousness for your name's sake and for your glory. Uh, Father, and we pray for these that are on the prayer list continually, Lord, just lifting them up to you, knowing, Lord, that uh, you have everything in control and that you're going to work all things for the good of those who love you and have been called according to your purpose. Uh, Father, we just trust in your will, your perfect will. Uh, we trust in your plan for our lives, Father, and, and, and we are waiting patiently for that day that you call us home. And we look forward to that blessed hope uh, when the skies will part, Father, and the archangel says, come up hither, and we are gone. Lord, what a blessing. And in the meantime, Lord, we just pray that you'll make us bold and strong and, and continue to use us mightily for your name's sake down here as we uh, uh, should be preaching the word to everyone we come in contact with, Lord, and spreading that love and that cheer and that joy to everyone. Father, we pray for those that we mentioned by name today. Father, I ask humbly, Lord, to put your hand upon these people and give unto them according to their needs, and go before them, Lord, and work the things that need to be worked for their benefit, for your glory. We pray for Yvonne Spry, Lord, continually, that tomorrow that her, her cap will go well, and uh, that everything will be fine with that, Father, and that uh, she'll be restored to good health, and, and be able to go home and be with Ken, and come back into our church, Lord, as we sing your praises and give you honor and glory for that. Lord, we pray for my mom. I thank you for the good news, a good report, and I pray that uh, you'll work that surgery on the 23rd for her good. Father, we praise you and thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you uh, for the uh, good reports that we got today. Father, the, the praise reports. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for the healthy babies. Thank you so much, Father. 
And Lord, we pray for Marge Lashaw. We don't know exactly what it is, but you know what it is, and we're just lifting her up to you and pray that you put your hand upon her and provide for her every need. Lord, we pray for Kevin, our, our brother in Christ, and we just pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll heal him, uh, relieve the pain that's in his neck, relieve the pain that's in his shoulder and back, and restore his health, Lord, and let him get a good report from the doctor so that he can go back to work, Lord. Uh, you know he wants to. He's anxious to do that. But, Lord, we're trusting in you and your plan. And, Lord, you are good and faithful, and we love you. Father, we pray for Michelle and her MRI coming up on Tuesday, that that will work for her benefit and for your glory as we sing your praises already. Lord, we pray for uh, uh, the baby that's up in Kentucky, Lord. Uh, uh, Evelina, I believe her name is. Lord, we just pray that you work that uh, for her good and heal her, Lord. I will. We just pray that you put your hand upon her and remove any stumbling that uh, may be in her body and work it for her good, for her family's good, and for your glory. And I pray, Father, that you'll give her family peace and comfort and strength during this time. Lord, it's never good to have a child hurting. It's never good to have anyone hurting, especially a child. Lord, we just we pray that your almighty hand be upon her and work this Lord, for her good. Father, we, we pray for Ricky Dukes again, Lord, that his neck and back issues will be rectified. And we give you praises, Father, for the things that you've given us in our lives and for all the blessings that we have. Lord, too numerous to mention, but as we pray alone, Lord, we're calling them out to you. Lord, I thank you so much for the blessings in my life, uh, the, the way that you're using me and the way that you've used this church and the church members and our pastor Howard being back here, Father, and what he has meant to me and this church and his family. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for this day. We ask you to bless us, Lord, and uh, bless Brother Brian as he brings us the message this morning. I pray that you speak through him and touch our hearts with your word, Father, that we always become doers of the word, not just hearers only. We love you, we praise you, and it's in Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Three thirty one. Sorry, three thirty one. <laughs>
time to take out for us to sing. So y'all who aren't too old, stand up and turn to hymn number 213. 213. And after this, you can remain standing and greet those around you. And kids can go back to
Because if I don't, Mama might not cook for me. You never turn down a request from your daddy or your mama. So I'm going to try this one. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear what what a privilege to carry everything to God in What peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, all because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer And are you weak and heavy laden Cumbered with a load of care Savior, still my refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for Take it to the 
Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a soul as know how blessed you are when you got some musicians that you can just tell them what key you're going to be in and they can just pick it up. <laughs> Back home in Kentucky with the musicians I work with, I got to have it where they got to have the note. <laughs> they have no sense of what to play. You know, this might be a little bit too loud, so I'll just turn it down to here. If that is all right. Take your Bibles. I'm glad Chris talked about the origins of the King James Bible this morning because this is all we've got to stand on. Amen. Do not stand on my opinion. Do not stand upon my thoughts because if you do, you will fail. I will fail. But we've got the Word of God that we can stand on and let the word of God be true and every man what? A liar. You know, and I was glad he didn't go in the shuns this morning. <laughs> but they were getting all over close to where I was going to be at the first Corinthians, the first chapter. And I want to speak to you on the subject. I'll have to move that down a little bit, have my rest here. Of what a savior we've got. Amen. You see as born again believers. We can look to the savior. As our source of strength. And refuge. He's our peace. There's a whole lot that the scripture talks about Jesus Christ being to the believer. And I like to quote Philemon verse 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So when I go through the scripture and I begin to see in him, in whom, through whom, and it's re referencing to Jesus, I say that's for me. It says I have the mind of Christ. Now some of you said I know better. You ain't got much of a mind to begin with. But the scripture says I have the mind of Christ, so I'm just going to go by what the scripture says than Richie's opinion. No. <laughs> or Brenda's for that matter. Yes, Brenda, you, well, you did bring some of your family. I told her, she, she come up to me, she said, now, you going to be here tomorrow? I said, yeah, I'm be here tomorrow. I said, I'll be preaching tomorrow. I said, it's always good to have a sinner in church, so make sure you come. <laughs> and she, she told me, she said, no, I'll be bringing some of my family along. <laughs> but but y'all don't, don't worry. Ken and Grace showed up, and Grace is here. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you back from North Carolina. I'm going to start in two verses. But of course, I'll be going over a whole lot more than two verses, so y'all just follow along with me. The last two verses of the first chapter. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That's at a mouthful right yonder. Amen. That, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Father, it is a privilege 
that you granted to us to have not only just access, but you told us to come boldly before your throne of grace. And you made that accomplishment for us by your son Jesus Christ. When he died, Father, the veil was rent in two. And Father, we can come boldly before your throne. And I thank you for that. Father, today I ask that, number one, you hide me behind the cross. Father, that folks don't see this old country boy from Kentucky, but Father, they see Jesus Christ in me. Father, that the words that they hear are not my words, but the words and the unction of the Holy Spirit that makes the word alive, Father, that we can apply it to our hearts and to our lives. And Father, if there be one here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, Father, I pray, Father, that number one, you convict them of sin through the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, not only that, you begin to draw them to Christ as we lift up Jesus Christ this morning. And Father, Father, may they come to a no soul salvation this morning. And we give you all the honor and glory in the Christ Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Christ is made to us. There was four words there that I want us to concentrate on. He was made to us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Now, before we get too much into it, who made Christ to us that? God the Father. Because it's but of Him, and it's referring to Him, it's referring to, is God Himself. Folks, there has nothing in your life or in this, the, the time span of this entire world that has ever taken God by surprise. Amen. The fall of Adam did not take God by surprise because he already had a plan of redemption that was laid out before the foundation of the world. So don't ever think that there's been anything in your life that has caught God off guard. It may catch you off guard. And you know why most things catch us off guard? I'm going to be honest with you. is because we're not looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Folks. Nothing in your life has taken God by surprise. It might surprise you when they lay you off at work. It might surprise you when some, you get a telephone call that says, Hey, you need to get to Florida. Your dad's in the hospital. And they're talking about cutting off his leg. I just talked to him a little while before. That. Yeah, he was sick and he wasn't feeling good and all this other, but he didn't have COVID. Then I get to call, he's got COVID and he's got double pneumonia. You know, that takes us by surprise. But folks, ain't none of it took God by surprise. God had a plan. Sometimes God has got to get you looking up where he can use you in places that you would never go to the beginning. Have any of you tried to go to the hospital? To minister to some, somebody, some nurse, when they're in lockdown, the only way you're going to get in is if you're sick. It's the truth. And I heard my dad many times talk about the Lord to nurses. He talked about the Good Samaritan to one, and she'd never heard of the story of the Good Samaritan. So dad, and I... I Later on that night, I said, Lord, let the seed that was sown there be watered, that it would increase. I don't know that nurse's name. I doubt he could remember that nurse's name. He might not even remember the situation I'm talking about. But you know what? God knows who she is. But God has a plan. 
So none of this is taking God by surprise. Man's sin never took God by surprise. He had a plan. And as part of God's plan in the life of the believer, I'm primarily talking first to believers. God has a plan and he made Christ for you and to you to be wisdom. Now some of you scratching your head because you've got a book learned idea of what wisdom is. You do not go to Merriam Webster to find out what the definition of wisdom is whenever you're talking about God's wisdom. God's wisdom is defined in verse 24. Verse 24 says, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and notice that next word, that conjunction, and. He didn't stop there with just the power of God. He also said, and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. I know a lot of preachers, particularly I've got, I've got friends all over the Baskin Robbins 31 flavors of church <laughs> preachers. And I've got a lot of them that if they would, they would focus more on the power of God. And I was teasing Richie about that chair. They'd probably take that chair and want to hit somebody with it and just make sure they fell down in their church. I ain't going to hit nobody with that chair. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but it's not only about the power of God, but it's about the wisdom of God. You know, if you have one... Whenever I moved to Kentucky, and y'all folks from Kentucky, y'all probably have heard this before. And if you're from North Carolina or, or moved to North Carolina and stay up there, you'll hear this. You walk kind of like this. <laughs> one foot, one leg grows longer than the other so you can walk on the hills. That is what happens when you focus on one part of verse 24 without making application to the wisdom of God. You cannot walk in the power of God in your life unless you're also walking in wisdom. And who is wisdom? It's Jesus Christ. That's why God, in, in the inspiration of the um, Apostle James, said, if any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask. But let him ask in faith, not what? Doubting, Doubting not wavering. Yeah. And it talks about double-mindedness, yeah. you know, being like the wind of the, you know, it's being out of, out of balance, you know. It's hard to do that in Florida. Matter of fact, I'm going to take that little shovel they had in that dessert yesterday and tell them the soil in Florida is so poor, poor this is what they used to dig ditches. <laughs> But you see, the wisdom of God is summarized in Jesus Christ. That's why we can ask God for wisdom and expect to receive it because all of God's wisdom points to one person in history, Jesus Christ. You see, if you really want to know what wisdom is, wisdom according to God's word, would be looking at things through God's perspective, not man's. Man's wisdom said it's all about intellect. But you see, if it was about our intellect, we would have a reason to brag and boast. But because it's about Jesus Christ and our relationship and our fellowship with Jesus Christ, you ain't got no reason to brag. As Chris said this morning, you've got to get dumber to get wiser. It's not about head knowledge. It's about 
heart knowledge. Understanding and believing with the heart. And we're going to get into that. God wants you to be full of spiritual wisdom. And being full of spiritual wisdom is to be full of Christ Jesus. The problem is, is are you full? I was full yesterday when I left here of barbecue. If you consume barbecue, you're going to get full of barbecue, right? Amen. And you're going to be full. And I was sort of like reminded of that little cartoon commercials, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. We're just trying to get Daddy to the point he's a weeble, so he don't fall down. He may wobble, but we don't want him falling. Amen or oh me. You see, what are you full of? Are you full of Christ Jesus? Are you full of His Word? Because His Word is truth. Amen or oh me. When the circumstances of life, what is the first thing that comes out your mouth? If it ain't God's Word, then it's whatever you're full of. The simple truth. God provided for the believer through Jesus Christ access to the wisdom of God to see life through His perspective. I have to wear glasses to see things straight. If I take off my glasses, I can't tell any of y'all who you are unless you speak up. Now I can tell that. What, what color do they call that? Uh, it's some... some, some if you can't pronounce it, don't wear it and don't eat it. I got to remember that one. I'm trying to. But God made Christ Jesus wisdom that is always available to the believer. Amen. Because if you had to count on book learning, some of us have done forgot what they told us in them books. But Jesus Christ is always available for the believer who puts his faith and trust in him and is not double-minded, not, well, I'm gonna, I'll trust what the Lord says this minute and I'll trust what Sister Charlotte says this next minute. You follow me. Now let's move on. Not only did God make Christ Jesus available, wisdom available through Christ Jesus, He made righteousness available to us. Oh, the Word of God teaches us that there is none righteous, no, not one. Amen? Amen. You see, before you met Christ Jesus, your righteousness was as filthy, stinking rags. But Christ Jesus is made unto you righteousness. He is the one that gives us access to the throne of God. He is the one that, that God looks at Christ. He doesn't look at Richie. And says, I see Jesus. I see the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Turn over to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And um, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man, now let me say something, ladies, that includes you. Any human, any man, woman, boy, or girl, that kind of sets it for what God says it is. We ain't going by what the woke generation says, 57 varieties. But any man, be where? In Christ. He, she, is, it's not something that you are becoming, but the instant that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a what? New creature. 
old things are passed away, behold, all things. I love whenever the descriptors of all are given. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Aren't you glad of that? Now, skip on down, because I, I'm, I'm already, it's noon. And I didn't get started that long ago, so y'all know you ain't gonna you ain't gonna beat the Methodist to Wendy's. God was reconciling all things to himself through Christ Jesus. And then it go, comes down in the end of verse 20, it says, Be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be what? Sin. For who? Us. You see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, God, for the believer, took your sin and put it on Christ. He did that actually for the entire world, but it's to as many as believe. He put your sin on Christ. And he took Christ's righteousness and he put it on old Larry. I did get that right, didn't I? He put his righteousness on Chris. Why? Because Chris believes. He hath made him who knew no sin. He gave him our sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made, now notice that, made the righteous. It's not that we were righteous, we were unrighteous, we did not deserve it, and God gave it to us anyway because we believe through that wonderful word of grace. And he ain't talking about your wife. <laughs> I got to do that every now and then, make sure she's paying attention, Kim. Amen. But he gave us Christ's righteousness so that we are now the righteousness of God, not through our works, not because we're a member of Word of Faith Bible Church or Bible Baptist or wherever you happen to have a piece of paper that says that you're a member. That membership won't do you not one bit of good if the church mouse comes in and eats it up. Because righteousness is not bestowed upon you because you deserved it. God's righteousness, Christ's righteousness is not given to us because any of us deserved it. It was given to us because God says, I'm going to give grace to those that, what? Believe. It has nothing to do with, and pardon, and I know this was going to offend a lot of people because a lot of people got their trust and hope in saying a little prayer. Shaking a preacher's hand. It has to do with believing. Has it, you, anybody can say a little prayer. And not believe it. People do it all the time. It has to do with believing. You say. I said a prayer. Only thing that did is if you believe it's reinforced what you already believed. If you shook the preacher's hand and come down and you got welcomed, you know, given the right hand of Christian fellowship, I was about to say in the left foot of this fellowship in some churches, <laughs> you know, but if you were given the right hand of Christian fellowship, that did not save you. It only reinforced what you already believed and let you know that there are people that are praying for you because you're now a brother or sister. Amen or oh me. You see, if you're counting on anything other than Christ, you're counting on the wrong thing. 
And I'll get to you in a minute. But he's made to us righteousness and sanctification. Now in the scripture, sanctification means to be set aside from this use to something that is holy. Now in the Old Testament, you will hear used a lot, it said to sanctify yourself. In the Old Testament, what they were doing is set aside yourself for this feast or for this day. It would be like us saying, there's going to be a birthday party. And we ain't let nobody, do not let Howard or Richie know anything about it. Don't let them know. Folks, that's going on on Facebook for a couple of months. <laughs> I, I, I told Sarah, I said, you don't know how hard it is. Because I was talking to all the old people that didn't Facebook. And I had to tell them, don't tell daddy. Don't mention it to daddy. You know, and you just make sure that they ain't hard of hearing, you know. <laughs> but anyway, what did we do? We set aside that day on the calendar. We took a bath, some of us. We put on clean clothes, some of us. And we prepared ourselves for the festivities. Do you, you get where I'm understanding? Yeah. That's what um, God was telling the Jews in the Old Testament when he said sanctify yourself. Sanctify this day. Set it apart that it is different than any other day. Now, we don't do that. But the word of God itself sanctifies us. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, whenever he's talking about husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And he talks about and sanctified it by the washing of the water of the word. God's word sanctifies us. Jesus in John the 17th chapter, I believe it is, prayed, said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And who is the word? Jesus Christ. The word made flesh and dwelt among us. God used Christ. The Word, the living Word, to sanctify you, to set you apart, to make you different than what you used to be. A while back I wrote a song, when I came to Jesus, I came just as I am, but thank God He didn't leave me that way. Why? Because we get into the Word of God and that Word of God changes us. It judges us. When we read it, the Holy Spirit makes it alive to us and causes us to realize when we fall short to come and ask for forgiveness. And what does the Word say? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to what? Forgive. To forgive and to do what? <laughs> Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The problem is a lot of believers are going around trying to cleanse themselves from, and they're, they're trying to make it a work of the flesh instead of a work that is bound in Christ Jesus. Because that word to cleanse means a continual washing of the water of the word. When you read the word, people say, well, it don't have any effect. Oh, no, it has an effect. I wrote a story and put it on Facebook about the grandfather. His, his grandson said, Papa, he said, you know, the, reading the Bible don't have any effect in my life. And he said, well, son, he said, go get the coal basket and go down to the river and get me a basket full of water. 
Everybody knows a basket's got holes in it. And anyway, he went down there and he got there and he come running up. And he says, Papa, he says, I don't have any water in the basket. It all leaked out. He said, go back again. And he kept going back. And about the seventh or eighth time, whenever he went down to the river, and he kept saying, run harder. Do all of this. He said, look in the basket. He said, see, we think that the reading of the Word of God has none effect, but if you keep on doing it, keep on reading it, keep on applying it, keep on praying about it, keep on desiring to live after it, saying, Holy Spirit, I, I may not understand it, but I believe it because it is the Word of God. Amen. You see, too many, you, you approach this book with saying, I've got to understand it. No, the only thing God requires you to do is believe it. And as you believe it, as you read it, the Holy Spirit will begin to make it real to you and you'll begin to understand it. You see, Christ is made to us sanctification. And then finally it says he is made and what? Redemption. You see, redemption is the breaking of spiritual bondage by the act of a redeemer. The Bible teaches us that we are all sinners. We're born in sin. Now you said earlier them, them grandbabies are sweet. Now I, I don't doubt that. Not one bit. I remember when grandbabies were born. I remember when my kids was born. They was the sweetest thing on earth. You know, loved them to death. Still love them to death. They may not all be living right, but you know what? I still love them. Amen. But you know one thing? I had to remember that they were born with a sin nature. And it didn't take very long for them to begin to show signs of having a sin nature. No. And they go over and do it anyway. Or you tell them what to do and they use the word no back on you. <laughs> you see, we're all born with the sin nature. We all need a redeemer. Amen. And Christ Jesus is the only redeemer that God is offering. He doesn't say select your own. He don't say make come up with your own plan. So I'm like Jesus. I, I wish they'd have taken that song. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Because that is a lie straight out of the pit of hell. And there's too many believers that will sing that. And some of them even dance to it, you know. You think I'm fooling. You ain't been to some churches I've been in to sing. They want to say me and Jesus. So they change it from got a, our own thing. We got a good thing going. No. God has a great thing if you'll just accept it the way God. It don't need any changing. He don't need to sit down and ask your opinion about how to work it out. He wants you to believe it. Finally, to the lost, to the person that says, I haven't. I don't know if I have really fully trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. See, you don't qualify to have any understanding of what I just said. Because that Paul wrote that to believers. He didn't write it to the lost. He wrote it to believers. Folks, I'm going to tell you what, that ought to make a good Baptist want to shout <laughs> that God has provided for us wisdom he has provided for us righteousness and sanctification and he's provided for us redemption all through his son Christ Jesus but you know if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ and your savior he's willing to provide it for you People say, well, you know, I've, I've heard a lot. I said, what does it mean to believe with the heart? I asked if they could be a chair here, and I'm going to get this chair. And I told Richie, I hope this chair will hold me up. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people to talk about the Lord. It's the truth. 
you meet anybody out on, on, on the street, and if you talk to them, they can talk about the Lord all day long. Oh, I pray to the Lord. Praying to the Lord and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your only hope of salvation are two different things. They may even walk around and say, well, I come to church. And you know what? I believe. I believe that chair will hold me. I will believe that Jesus could save me. They have mental assent. It's the truth. They have mentally agreed with the word, but they've never experienced it. They mentally agree with it. See, all of this that I've talked about doesn't do them any good. They can mentally agree with it, and amen all day, they won't. Why? Because they're the ones that's still in charge. You see, I really believe that if you come to Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in Him and Him alone, He will change you. He'll do the changing. There's a lot of people talk about a relationship with Christ, but they've never experienced the fellowship with Christ because they're not willing to give up their sin. Man, it got quiet. You mentioned sin in a Baptist church and they're about to give you the left foot of fellowship. <laughs> but I forgot y'all not Baptist, are you? They took that word out. So it's safe to talk about sin. You see, coming to Christ Jesus is a life transforming moment. Grace doesn't find you in the condition that you are and say, hey, you're okay. You're just like everybody else. I'm going to leave you there. And I didn't mean anything by pointing over at you, Doug. <laughs> Doug might be able to whoop me. I'm getting old, Richie. I hear you. But you see, God's grace is a transforming grace. A transforming grace. Why? Because he doesn't leave you in the same condition he found you. He changes you. He provides that redeemer that you needed. And through his word, through study, God sets you apart that you're acting different than you used to. You follow me? You come to realize that you're not counting on your own works to save you because your works are filthy rags. You quit to try and take a bath with dirty rags, cleaning yourself up, because you realize that only Christ Jesus can cleanse you. And then finally, you begin to get some wisdom about you because you're no longer relying on the mind of the flesh, but you're beginning to rely on the Word of God and it transforms your life. You see, but that doesn't happen by chance. People say, well, I can just go to church. I can go to church where there's plenty of chairs and I can just acknowledge that the chair is nice, I believe that it's strong enough to hold me and I can talk about that chair all week long. I can talk religion with anybody. And that's what most people talk about is they don't talk about a relationship. They don't talk about fellowship with Christ. They talk about religion. But something happens when somebody realizes, I can't do it on my own. They said, Lord, I trust in you and you alone to save me. I trust in you and you alone to change me. I trust in you and you alone to keep me. You see, there's some people, they don't believe the Lord is strong enough to keep them. So they try to add a little bit to it. They don't believe that the Lord is strong enough 
to change them. So they want to add something to it. Well, and they start talking about I, 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 I. You see, but the last verse of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, what does it say, Chris? I said, I done caught him off guard. He closed his Bible because I closed mine. Oh, Lord. He said that according as it is written. What is it? I'm letting you get there. I'm trying to give you time. I know. Keep it going, brother. As according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Who are you glorying in? If you're not glorying in the Lord, you need to come and meet him. You need to come and trust him completely. Not only to save you, but to change you. And not only to change you, but to keep you. And as he's keeping you, you're gaining wisdom. And it didn't come from you. I like the old song said, I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on that cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. Oh, what a Savior we got. And if you don't know Him, you need to make time to believe. You say, well, I've been convicted before. Maybe the Lord will convict me another time, preacher. You ain't guaranteed another time. You know, I might drop dead before I finish. Might do it. I could do it. Because ain't none of us guaranteed another breath. But folks, if the Holy Spirit is convicting you, this is... This is why your life is so in shambles in such a way. It's because you've never completely trusted Christ Jesus as your Savior. It's time to believe. See, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those that perish. But for us that believe, it is the what? The power of God unto salvation. Have you completely trusted in Him? Or have you been one of them walking around the chairs, circling the wagons, trying to make yourself... There's a lot of self-help books. There are, and I'm going to tell you what they will amount to. Sorry, I never knew you. You see, there's a lot of TV preachers out there that they avoid the Bible because the Bible convicts them of their own sin. And they want to preach a feel-good message. You don't come to church to feel good. You come to church to worship God. And if that makes you feel good, then praise God for it. But I'm not telling you something to hurt you. I'm trying to reach out and as my dad one time preached he be that roadblock to hell for somebody he says hey come and receive Christ Jesus as your savior come and only trust him only believe see it's not about joining the church it's not about anything else it's about putting your faith and trust only in him and if you're a believer Start believing what the Word of God says that Christ has been made to you. Start walking in it. Because our lives are the only Bible that some people around these parts read. They don't take time to go into the NIV. They, all the, <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But they know, they know how to read Richie down to the chapter and verse, don't they? They know how to read me. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, go ahead and stand to your feet if you would as the musicians are coming. Brother Richie, if you'll come down here to the front, I'll put the chair out of the way.
But if you're here today and you don't know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've never fully trusted in Him and, and come to that place, the Bible says, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. He said, I'll give you rest. And the only way we can rest is we rest from our works and trust only in His. If that's you, you just say, Preacher, I'm not sure of my salvation this morning because I don't know if I'm leaning only on Christ Jesus. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? We'll pray for you. I see those hands. <coughs> you know, acknowledging it is one thing. And you can put your hands down. I see those hands. Acknowledging that you don't know Christ is one thing. But believing takes a step. When are you saved? The moment you believe. And if you raised your hand this morning, I want to give you one last challenge. Just to slip out from where you are and come down. Take Brother Richie by the hand and say, Brother Richie, today I finally believed in Jesus Christ as my Savior. And everything else, everything you do, from saying a prayer, to becoming a part of this church family, to being baptized, None of that saves you. It only reinforces what the Lord has done for you. And you'll find that life changes with Christ Jesus. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to challenge you to make that decision for Christ today. Go ahead. Him number... 366 number 366 in the big book Jesus Jesus
Father, we're just asking you to help us be with the ones on the prayer list, Lord, as well. Ask you to discomfort and help us each and every one go with us this week, Lord. And Father, we're just asking you to just guide us and direct us. Lord. Thank you.